Flex Media Servers Multiplexes into DDoS Attacks. So Ganesh, I understand you have a story about new DDoS attack? Uh, thanks, Jim. Yes, it's about a new attack, DDoS attack vector recently found. Uh, using Flex Media Servers. I mean, uh, we all know Flex Media Servers kind of, I think, dated at this time, but before the ubiquity of these Apple TVs, all those devices, everybody used to run some sort of Flex Media, right? They can be used for streaming as well as the personal media. And the good thing about that one is it can be run in any platform. It could be run in a Windows machine. It can be run in a Linux flavor as well as in Mac OS. I think uh, recently one of the researchers, uh, I think by Beidou in China, they they found some sort of attack vectors which are leveraging basically uh, some sort of vulnerable flex servers. Uh, why is that? Uh, why is that? It's a new attack vector has been found. It seems like that this new attack vector they named as PMSSDP, where which is for uh, flex media SSDP, basically simple service discovery protocol, right? That's what the name they have given to this attack vector. Why? Because I think during the process of the flex server startup, uh, any flex server tries to look for uh, uh, any SSDP connected devices on the network. It could be a local network and a corporate network. It tries to locate for those uh, SSDP enabled servers. I think because of this, uh, the design feature itself, it's not a flaw, but the design by itself, how the flex server is built in, what is happening is that sometimes uh, our internet routers, maybe gateway, whatever you call it, basically they also have some sort of SSDP enabled, right? When it occurs, these media servers are actually discovering those servers also. Because of that, even these um, flex servers are behind a firewall or something like that, but they're providing a, some sort of a vulnerability exposure to the outside network. And also, they they one of the features is when uh, when a flex server sub found any of these gateway servers, what it does is kind of open support forwarding. Why we, why they're doing it? Because they want to give access to their media servers from outside world, right? That kind of actually poking a firewall into the basically into the secure network. That is base, a basis of the new DDoS vector, uh, but it's not that prevalent. But it it, it can be leveraged. I think. Um, uh, they calculated the amplification factor of about 4.8, which is close to five times. In the sense, I think uh, uh, when when a vulnerable P um, flex media server is discovered, I think that they can ma magnify the attack vector by five times. Uh, they've seen attack vector size of about two to three gigabits if only they are using the flex servers. But the, the way they are being used at this time is, I think they are using in blended threats, like we have seen NTP reflection. DNS reflection, but this is not only the only vector they're using, but they're, they're combining with other DDoS attack vectors, and they're leveraging actually new botnet victims into their uh, what are the DDoS stressor booter services. That is the basic story of it, Jim. But uh, I think uh, they are also given uh, certain versions which they found to be vulnerable. I think any versions below 1.21 seems to be vulnerable. There is not a fix available right now, but uh, Flex is working on a hard fix to be released soon. It, it seems like we always keep coming back to these, you know, same old attacks that we've seen before. The the reflection DDoS attacks. You know, we when we, we can go clear back to the NTP ones, probably mm -hmm. what six seven years ago. And uh, the universal plug and play ones and these SSDP ones have been around for a number of years too. But why do these why do these things need to be exposed to the internet? I mean, seriously. Uh, Just sitting here shaking my I, head. I I I. I see, I see this question, but I think um, in this scenario, most likely it's my just a guesstimation because nowadays I, I think very few people are using flex media servers. 
I used to have it. I no longer run it. Uh, but I think it's inadvertently they exposed to the internet because of the way these servers are built. Um, even though amplification is not there compared to one of the recent ones, like a Memcached, which actually right. I think a 54,000 times amplification compared to Open that. Like this something seems, huge. Yeah. 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 This is the, the article actually said there were 37,000 that had been identified publicly. I'm assuming through. Shodan scan or something. Um, um, yeah, I think most likely some sort of uh, scanning. Uh, they figured out those number. I think 37,000 is the number they give you. Uh, and also the recommendations is I think by default, uh, uh, Flex Media Server runs on 32414 UDP port. But besides that, I think uh, 32410 is also seems to be associated with Flex Media. I think if anybody is running it, it's it's better to lock down. If not, you know, have better controls to monitor the traffic going to these ports. Um, and also, the version numbering is the important key. I think if they're running anything below 1.21, it's time to lock down as much as possible. One of the interesting things I saw um, in the article was they've seen, you know, uh, about five and a half thousand. Uh, attacks out there on the internet that have been including this as at least one of the distributed denial of service attack vectors. And that they are looking at that as uh, sort of the <clears throat> ramp up of that into that, um, you know, criminal service enterprise kind of space whereby, you know, the original threat actors that were, you know, identified this and were using it in their own toolkits have now been uh, have monetized and weaponized this particular attack vendor uh, vector and are making it uh, available to that you know broader criminal element uh, there um, as part of the attacker underground. Uh, so it is going to be interesting to see, given that this is uh, really a, a great target for that particular uh, threat actor population because it's widespread, outdated consumer. Um, grade uh, items that, you know, frankly, are probably not going to get addressed, right? I mean, a lot of people that are running these servers probably don't even know that they're vulnerable and likely aren't going to find out. Um, mm -hmm. So really, um, that's going to be an interesting challenge. And I suspect that, you know, you'll see, um, you know, while there might be some percentage of the population that uh, applies patches, I think this is going to be one of those examples of things that, um, until such time as we find a way to, you know, proactively address these issues at the, you know, widespread consumer basis, that customers uh, in the enterprise space are going to have to look to uh, cloud solutions and in-network solutions in order to be able to mitigate effectively. Those, uh, those are really good points, Mike. Uh, I think uh, you kind of hit some of them on the head itself. Um, but also, I just want to add one more, what, one more comment to what you already said. Um, even though some network is secure because of the port forwarding capability it has, I think that that's more more worrying for me, basically, in the sense, even though some network we feel it's been protected because of the port forwarding, this is flex server, they're opening one specific port. I think uh, that's how they can leverage. Maybe they use that as a springboarding to get into the network. From there, they're using other uh, blended DDoS attacks, you know, they, basically amplify the size of the attack attack sizes. I think uh, in the article also they mentioned when they used Omni vector size, I think uh, not only not only this multi, uh, I mean the flex media server, which combined with maybe most likely DNS amplification, maybe slash NTP amplification, they've seen the attack sizes up to 220 gig, gigabits per second. That's a lot. Uh, I mean, uh, as a single, it's a two to three gigabits, but when you're using with other attack vectors, actually, it's jumped by so many times. So most most of the organizations that doesn't have that bandwidth to basically sustain that kind of attacks for longer times. That's the most worrying part. Yeah. Well, uh, we've we've talked about them over the years, but yeah, if if the service doesn't need to be exposed to the internet, don't expose it to the internet. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. <laughs> how many times have we said that over the years? And that's the, 
the best way to protect against most of these is these services don't need to be exposed to the internet. I mean, you know, yes, you know, we've had DNS and NTP where those are going to be exposed to the internet, but you know, if you don't need to expose it to the internet, don't expose it to the internet. In a nutshell, is it fair to say what, what you both of you said? Just take a look at the inventory of the server services we have and come up with your list. Okay, and looking at this, and this service doesn't seem to be relevant now. Maybe I should switch it down. Maybe that, that should be the approach to lock down a little bit of this one. Only have it exposed to the, you know, the systems that need access to it. Now, the, uh, in the zero trust world, you know, we're not talking, we're talking about firewalls not being there anymore and you know the controls are, should, should be closer to the you know to the system that's providing the service well in this particular case if you must have a less media server only have it available to the systems that need access to it you know those in your house or whatever.